text, the gospel reading, Mark, excuse me, John 6, verses 22 to 35. In Jesus' name, amen. So it's the morning after the feeding of the 5,000 plus. Some of the crowd remained overnight at that seaside location of the miraculous feeding. They saw the disciples leave in the lone boat the previous evening. They knew Jesus had not gone with the twelve. Perhaps they had even seen him go up the mountainside to pray in private. But now he's nowhere to be found. Some boats come from the other side of the sea and then carry these remaining people back to Capernaum, and there they find Jesus. They ask the question, when did you come here? The question really includes, how did you get here? <laughs> Since the time was so short, they knew it would have taken much longer had he walked around the sea, which is what they assumed he must have done. They didn't see the walking on the water the night before and the miraculous stopping of the the storm and the disciples and Jesus immediately being at their destination. They ask him, they ask about him, and Jesus answers about them. You seek me not because of signs, but because of full stomachs. And he rebukes them because of what they failed to see, the sign revealing him as true God. Yet right after rebuking them, Jesus speaks a call to grace. Labor for the food or work for the eating which remains to life eternal, which the Son of Man will give to you. Every earthly food and worldly possession and satisfaction is going to perish. It won't last. Jesus calls them and us to an eating that remains into eternal life. Well, they have just heard Jesus tell them to labor for or work for something that lasts eternally. So they ask, what must we do to do the works of God? Somehow they had missed the last part of Jesus' sentence. He had just told them that the Son of Man will give them the food that lasts to eternal life. All it seems they could focus on was the work for in the beginning of the sentence. They had become used to thinking that the things that they did, following all those man-made regulations of the Pharisees, somehow earned God's favor for them. So now Jesus makes it clear that this work is not a list of do's and don'ts, but it's something completely different. Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe in Him whom God has sent. So the work of God is not work God commands them to do, but it's work that God does. We need to remember that faith is not something that begins in us. Faith is worked in us by the Holy Spirit, working through God's work, Holy Word and sacraments. Uh, Dr. Lenski writes that faith is not the fundamental virtue, something we do, from which all other works flow. Faith is the opposite of all other works. Faith receives from God. The other works make a return to God. Well, they respond with another question, almost an accusation. And as you hear next week's and the following week's Gospel readings, this just kind of increasingly uh, grows their opposition to Jesus. What sign do you do? What work do you perform that we may see and believe? Well, they just saw a miracle, but this is what's in their mind. They go on to remind Jesus of the children of Israel, which would have not just been 5,000 plus, but probably a million and a half or more. Millions being fed day after day in the wilderness for 40 years. Then they say, bread from heaven he gave them. And when they say he gave them, they meant Moses gave them. They're asking, what have you done, Jesus, that comes even close to Moses? 
What have you done that equals manna in the wilderness for 40 years? You're not even that old. <laughs> they knew one meal to 5,000 plus didn't compare to a few million mouths every day for 40 years. And that was food no one had ever seen before. In fact, the Hebrew name for it, manna, as we heard this morning, comes from a word that means, what is it? What is it? They want Jesus to do something greater than Moses did. So Jesus again shows their flawed understanding. It was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. In the first place in the wilderness, Moses didn't cause that miraculous food to appear. God did. Moses merely told the people what God was going to do every day. That it would be there every morning. Moses was God's mouthpiece to tell His Word to the people. But then Jesus indicates a difference from the miraculous manna to the true bread from heaven that the Father was now giving. This true bread from God comes down from heaven and doesn't feed a million or so, but gives life to the world. That's another level. Jesus is speaking about Himself, but they don't believe it. They do want bread that's going to give them eternal life, but they're still thinking about worldly eating, physical eating that can be had without them working for it. Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus now says it as simply and as bluntly as He can. I am the bread of life. And in the language Jesus spoke, it would have been plain to them that He had spoken of Himself as Yahweh, the, the I am, the personal name of God. Next week in verse 41, we're going to hear their murmuring about that. But for now, Jesus goes on to make it as clear as He can that He's talking about people following Him and believing in Him. That's the eating and drinking that they need. He is the gift of God that gives them eternal life. Jesus is the food and drink, the only food and drink that satisfies, that supplies what they need forever. Well, we can put ourselves in the shoes of those people Pretty easily, we go through life thinking, what are we seeking? Don't we desire to have all that we need for daily life? And maybe something more besides? Don't we wish it wasn't so hard to earn a living or that the desires of our hearts could be achieved by some sort of magical spell? And we know that doesn't usually happen. That leads us to their next question, what work must we do? What do we need to do to be successful in our words? Well, libraries and bookstores are full of how-to books, row upon row of them, and the internet has a multitude of video clips to watch for almost any task you can name. How to remove an oven door, which I did this week. But I didn't watch the end of the video. How to replace the oven door. And there's a little trick you have to know or it won't work. And I, I didn't watch it. I was getting frustrated. Mary said, walk away. <laughs> but there are videos for everything. How to sharpen mower blades. How to conduct yourself in a job interview. How to whatever you're seeking to do. We live in a world where we're used to thinking about what we must do to reach our goals, and in this world, that's something you have to do. We're not unlike those people in Capernaum of long ago. What bread do we desire? Well, we want our physical hunger satisfied by bread and all the other earthly food we need, or that we want. We want our other material desires satisfied, perhaps by the other stuff we sometimes call bread, money, you know, the things that we need to buy. We want our emotional desires satisfied. We want a lot. But very often we forget that all of those hungers can only be satisfied by things that perish 
things that are not going to last. Our Lord Jesus offers us the bread that we really need. He lovingly invites us, believe in me, never hunger, never thirst. Our Lord Jesus, and, and here John in verse 23, for the first time in his gospel, calls Jesus Lord, as John is referring back to Jesus giving thanks when he multiplied the fish and the bread. Now whether that sign and that name got through to John that day, I don't know. I kind of think not. Because we know that later that, you know, the night as Jesus was coming to the boat on the water, they didn't understand about the loaves. John, uh, Mark makes that clear last week. It probably took a while for John and the others of the twelve to recognize the meaning of the loaves and the meaning of the walking on water and the meaning of all that Jesus was doing, that Jesus was true God. But when John is later writing this gospel, I believe John finally knew that he should have recognized all the way back then the miraculous sign of the loaves and all the rest. Our Lord Jesus offers us the bread we really need. He offers us Himself. He comes to us again today in His Word, bread from heaven. He offers us Himself. He comes again today in His sacrament of the altar, bread and wine that include the very body and blood of Jesus, food and drink from God Himself. He comes to us and works faith in us. He comes to us and makes our lives clean by His forgiveness won on the cross. He comes to us and gives us life that lasts into eternity. What an amazing gift He offers. Believe in Me, never hunger, never thirst. That's good news. That's God's work in us and for us. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in this Christ Jesus. Amen.